Hello students, today we're going to look at section 4.1, which is graphing equations in slope-intercept form. And you probably remember, hopefully, that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Hopefully that's solid, okay? So we're going to look at how do I, have it, how do I take an equation in slope-intercept form and graph it. So let's say, for instance, I'm given that the slope is 3 fourths and that the y-intercept is negative 2. So first I need to come up with an equation, okay? So if my slope is 3 fourths and my uh, y-intercept is negative 2, then I can just plug in the m and b in the equation and I get uh, y equals 3 fourths x, because 3 fourths is m, minus 2, because b is negative 2. So now I can take this equation and I can graph it based on the information I'm given. I know that my slope is 3 fourths and I know that my y-intercept is negative 2. So I always start with my y-intercept and I'm going to use a red marker on this paper and I'm going to graph this one in red. So I'm going to start with my y-intercept as negative 2. So on the y-axis I go to negative 2 and that is the first point on my line. Okay, That's where I'm going to start. Now, if you have an opportunity to graph this in your composition book, great. If not, you can just watch. And I know you're going to pick up pretty quickly. I'm fine with either way. So I know that's my first point because it's the y-intercept. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. It's at negative 2. Now I'm going to use my slope and use the concept of slope. Now you remember that slope is also rise over run. So I'm going to take that concept of rise over run, and I'm going to use the slope of 3 fourths, and I'm going to do exactly that from this first point. So it tells me I need to rise 3, because that's part of the slope. So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to run 4, because it's the slope, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I got it right there. Now I'm going to show you that with loops. I know I have to rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I run 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's the second point on my line. Now, you remember though, when we graph lines, we have to have at least three points. Okay? So I have a choice. I could take this point, and I could rise and run from that point if I wanted to. So I'm going to do that, actually. So I'm going to rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to run 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's a third point on my line. It's important to know, notice that 3 was positive and 4 was positive. So that's why I went up and to the right, because both of those were positive. Now here's something uh, a little uh, tricky. What if I want to go from this point and make another point on my line from my original y-intercept? But then you're saying, Mr. Cohen, I've already gone up. But right, you can go down. Because remember that... 3 over 4 is exactly the same as negative 3 over negative 4. Because negative divided by negative is positive, so they're still the same things. So I could go down 3 and to the left 4, and I'm still okay. Let's see and make sure. Okay? So let's try. Let's go down 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's go to the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Does that fit with my line? Absolutely. So, I can go up and to the right or down and to the left when I have a positive slope. So let's draw the line. I always want to use a ruler. And I've got this gargantuan yardstick. And hopefully this point will go all the way through. And I put arrows on each end. And there is the graph of the line y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. Now I want you to notice something. If I went down 1, 2, 3 and went to the left 1, 2, 3, 4, oh look, there's another point on my line. But remember we only need three points. I just showed you that for fun. Well now let's say they give us some in different information. Let's say they give us an equation in standard form. 3x plus 2y equals 6 and they want us to graph this. Well, if the whole concept is being slope-intercept form, then I need to change my standard form to slope-intercept form. You'll notice that slope-intercept inter form starts with y equals, so I've got to solve this equation for y. And let's talk that through. 
Now, you remember the other day, if you're in my class, if you're somewhere in the world watching this, you probably weren't in my class the other day. So, I'll just say, whenever I cross the equal sign, magic happens, and I change the sign. So, we're going to use that concept. So, in order to solve for y, I first have to get rid of the 3x. Now, I can subtract 3x from both sides, and I got that. Or, I can just move the 3x to the other side, and when I move the 3x to the other side, it becomes negative 3x. So, I have 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. Yes, there is a reason that I put the negative 3x plus the negative 3x first and then the plus 6 because I want it to be in y equals mx plus b form. Just makes it easier that way. So now that I have y, 2y equals negative 3x plus 6, I've got to get y by itself and that means I have to divide by 2 on both sides. So I have to divide everything by 2. Everything by 2. So 2y divided by 2 is y, which is exactly what I want. I need to get y by itself. And then negative 3 over 2x, I'm not going to change it to a decimal. I'm going to leave it as negative 3 over 2. x. Because I need a rise and a run in order to graph. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm going to do plus 3. Now I have my equation in slope-intercept form. And now I get to graph it. I'm going to use a green marker this time, and I'm going to graph it on the exact same chart. But hopefully the green marker will differentiate. Okay? So I need to pick out some things. I know that m, my slope, is negative 3 over 2x. And I'm going to move that negative to its proper place, which is right there. And I know that b is 3. So I'm going to start with the b, which is the y-intercept. So I'm going to start with b is 3, so I go up to 1, 2, 3, that is my first point on the line because that's the y-intercept of this line. Now my slope says negative 3 over 2. Here's where I have to decide. Only one of those numbers can be negative. I can make that, and I'm going to scoot down here just a little bit. I can make that negative 3 over positive 2, or I can make it positive 3 over negative 2. Does not matter. Matter of fact, I'm going to use both. So let's start with the negative 3 over 2. That means I have to go down 3 and to the right 2. So if I go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2, 1, 2, then there's my second point on the line. Works so far, right? What if I change and I go up 3 and to the left 2? But I'm going to start back at my original y-intercept. Up 3 to the left 2. So I go up 3 and to the left 2, 1, 2, there's another point on my line. I've got three points on my line. I get a ruler, and I draw my line. I remember to put arrows on each end. Now let's just for fun see if we drew the line correctly. So I could go up 3 and to the left 2, and there's another point on my line. Or I could go down 3 and to the right 2, and there's another point on my line. It works. you got to get into your head that when I've got a negative slope, only one of the numbers can be negative. You choose. Again, your choice. Marker. And here are your practice problems for this video. It says rewrite the equations in slope-intercept form. So I've given you two equations that are in standard form, and I want you to rewrite them in slope-intercept form, which means you have to solve for y. Okay? Once you solve for y, and remember y is to be positive, once you solve for y, I want you to identify what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. First one is 3x minus 4y equals 12. The second one is negative 2x plus 5y equals 10. Solve for y. Then identify M and B. Take a picture of your practice problems and submit it through Edmodo. When we come to class, we'll stamp some uh, coordinate planes in our um, composition books, and then we'll graph them in class together.